first guest proved the last time that he was on this program. Uh, he is fascinating and often very bizarre uh, in the same way that his novels are. He is the author of such books as The Painted Bird, Steps, Being There, Blind Date, Passion Play. This is his newest one entitled Pinball. Please now welcome Mr. Jerzy Kaczynski. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. You look uh, you look great. You look fit. And uh, thanks, thanks for not bumping me off. <laughs> <laughs> now this you might explain what that's in reference to. Last last time I was supposed to be here and we ran out of time. That's right. And you did. You ran out of time. That's right. And uh, your friend uh, Paul Simon was here and things were. And he extended his time. That's right. Uh, no. That's what you get from friends. Uh, no. <laughs> there are no hard feelings here. I trust. No. Nope. Okay. I live 10 blocks away, so... Um, no problem. Sorry. I'll right. come back anytime. Well, maybe some night we'll just do the show from your house. <laughs> anytime. Now, now uh, I want to ask you a question here. In this introduction, which was written for me, uh, you're referred to as being bizarre as in the same way that somebody, what you write about is bizarre. Do you consider that to be an accurate assessment of Well, yourself? I read your profile in Rolling Stone. I think you should be the last one to ask. <laughs> I think tonight we are even. <laughs> no, no, I was, uh, well, uh, let's go on to something else. All right. Um, yes. But uh, when you were here before, we just began to touch on part of your behavior that encompasses going out at night. And I said, well, where do you go? And you said, I'm not telling. Remember that? Where do you go? When you, when you go out at night. And, you, you led me to believe that it was more than just going out to get a beer or, or two. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you still, you do that every night. Right. What time do you go out? Twelve. Midnight. One. Midnight one or one. Mm -hmm. Now, where do you go? You really want to know? Yeah. Well, let me, let me make a little uh, statement before. Okay. Um, I go to the places primarily where people meet each other. Now, um, after midnight, that's not a factory, it's not a garage, it's not an office building. It's a place where people meet each other rather informally, to be together. Um, just in case, I grew up at the time when people who met to each other met each other to kill each other, to arrest each other, Eastern Europe, Nazi, Stalinists. The only thing I'm really fascinated by, really, is to see places where people can be themselves, which means I go to the places, strange bars, swinging places, places where people dance without wearing anything. Anything to do with, I know, I know, why, well, listen, I mean, you ask for it. <laughs> you ask for it. Um, I am absolutely fascinated by human proximity, by proximity which is not based on hostility, which is not based on bureaucracy, which is not based on, oh, derogatory ideology, anything that is authentic. Mm -hmm. To my generation, sex, that's what we are talking about. Um, in any case, you, you know it from my books. Sex was the only positive force in society. It's the only force responsible for life, for you, for me, for them. Every other societal force that I have seen was basically negative. Military, ideology, bureaucracy, state, these were forces that were responsible for destroying all of us. In fact, after you bumped me off, uh, after I was bumped off the last show, I decided to re rehearse, so to speak. So I went to one of these places and I ran into someone from Eastern Europe. Okay, let's, let's stop right there. You went right. to one of these places and I ran into, no, into someone One from Eastern Europe. What Senor. places? What places? You, you've mentioned now sex and naked dancing and Lord knows whatever. That, that's the place. <laughs> that's the place. Uh, now what, you, what specifically? So everyone understands where you it, were. It's, it's a place of the kind I describe in Pinball, Dead Heat, uh -huh. or the, the Dream Exchange in, 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 in Passion. Would Play. this be a place, that, uh, a name others would recognize perhaps would be Plato's Retreat? Is it like, similar to an establishment like that? I don't... I don't recommend any particular place. I'm here as a novelist. <laughs> I go to all kinds of places uh -huh. and I synthesize them. Uh -huh. It's one of the places in which people are basically adults and they do what they want to do. Uh -huh. in, 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 in circumstances less formal than this one. Yeah. So, you, now, um, 
and not everyone is dressed in white. Uh-huh. Now you, you, you show up. I show up and I look. I just walk around and I look. I keep watching. Remember being there? I like to watch. Yeah. I love to watch. I'm all over the place. Now, don't, don't people uh, say, oh, look, there's world-famous author and actor, Jerzy Kozinski. Well, no, they are preoccupied with so many other things at the time that they, are, they do not, actually. <laughs> this is the last thing they would want to, to pay attention to. Now, you only go there to watch. I go there to write. Uh, where do you keep your pencil? Uh, uh, awful, awful joke. Uh, now, but, now, okay, you go there to, well, we're going to pause for a commercial. We'll be back to find out more about this fascinating man. Jerzy Kaczynski is with us, and uh, we moments ago established that you go to these places, these sex clubs, fair enough assessment? More or less, yes. And uh, so far you say you go there to observe and to, to write and research and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what about actual participation? Is this a... Now, let me, let me warn you about this. Mm -hmm. um, keep in mind that all the sex clubs in this country are basically men's invention. It's our fantasy. It's the fantasy, it's a male fantasy in which you imagine a place in which you and I can go, and you, you will see all kinds of women, mm -hmm. tall and short, young and old, um, blonde and blue-eyed, uh, and dark and black, and Polish. Mm -hmm. um, um, and somehow you feel that you and I, devoid of all the attributes of external appearance, can do anything we want. Now that's the myth, and we are punished for it, and I tell you how we are punished for it, and that's why when I go there, I would rather have a pencil. <laughs> we are punished for it because when we go there, we are not the only men there. You and I are not the only ones. There are other men. The other men who are there are there for a reason. They walk with an extended pride. The pride... Um, look, I, 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 I know, I know. They walk, they don't care. Now, you, you are supposed to wear a towel there if you want to. I would wear a towel all over myself. No, they wear the towel over the extended pride. Um, it can be very depressing. Um, there are men who go there, and within 10 minutes, they are so impressed by all that they have at their disposal that within, within minutes, they are all deflated, so to speak. Um, a man who is deflated, it's a very pathetic figure. He wears the towel all over the place. Mm -hmm. He watches paintings in a sex club. Mm -hmm. Now, there are other men who are afraid to give in to the male fantasy. Now, these are the walking saving accounts. They keep walking. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to touch anything because they're afraid of losing the pride. Mm. Which means that if you and I were to go there, we would have great difficulty figuring out what to do. Quite likely, you would ask me what my next novel is going to be all about, and we would sit down and make some yeah. notes. This now, is not an easy place for a man. Now, how, how do the women seem to function? Oh, like women are free. Women, uh, women, are, are, women can see what it is that is wrong with us. Women, I think it's a very important place. And again, I speak as a novelist. It's a very important place for a woman to go, to see how macho is destroyed, either by being what they want to be and disappearing very quickly, spent, so to speak, all the savings spent, or by being unable to part with what it is they make sure they the, um, uh, the matcha. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very educational place. Are there a lot of people at one of these places? 1,200, 600. In, in one club, tw you oh, have 1,200 sure. people? Yeah, 600 unhappy men walking around trying to figure out what to do and afraid to do anything. Wow. Terrible place for a man. Yeah. Is it is it fun? Have you enjoyed For me, yourself? it's an enormous fun. Yeah. It's an enormous now, fun. Now, do you, do, you do, do you have to take a, a female Wait. with you? Oh, well, yes. Um, in fact, last time when I went there, I went with someone from Eastern Europe, and she said to me, well, being an, a war generation, she said, I like to hug, uh -huh. but there's nobody here I would want to hug. Hmm. And so th I think it's the best place for those of us who, like Chauncey Gardner in being there, like to watch. Yeah. It's the best place yeah. just to go and it's, watch. Uh, strange, interesting, and uh, we'll continue this. We have to pause. Uh, nothing serious, just station identification. <laughs> then we'll be back. Jeff Altman will also be here tonight. <laughs>
makes life hard for me. Soft Philadelphia. Wednesday, the president salutes America's vets on real. What to do is taste beer peppers. You know the pleasure of a flavor you treasure. All you gotta do is taste beer peppers. The flavor's got a feeling, a rich and a feeling. And all you gotta do is taste This is 13 Strong, WTVG in Toledo. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome back to the show. Mr. Jersey Kaczynski is here. Uh, also later tonight, Stupid Petrix and uh, comedian uh, Jeff Waldman. Now, you mentioned that you were at one of these clubs with a, uh, a woman from Eastern Europe. Is that what you said? Uh, do, do, is there a, a great change or a great difference between... Uh, sexual activity or values or interest uh, between uh, Eastern Europe, Europe and... Europe and the United yeah. States. Enormous. Enormous. In fact, it's two different planets. I, I brought you some examples. I knew we were going to talk about it. Um, when I was writing Pinball, I kept cutting out clips from American newspapers, magazines. Here is an ad which appeared in all major magazines. Head of vasectomy? Question mark. <laughs> now encourage others. If you are already one of thousands of men who has had a vasectomy, join the National Vasectomy Club and inspire others to follow your lead in bringing population growth under control. Wait. Your remittance of $6.95 entitles you to a sterling silver lapel pin or a tie tack, membership card, and bumper sticker. <laughs> now, well, now... I understand lapel pin, but imagine dancing with someone, and she says, well, what is this? And you say, vasectomy club. <laughs> uh, vasectomy club. But I mean, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. But a membership card, whom do you show it to? Now, imagine yourself driving on a highway, and you are stopped by the highway patrol, and they say, hey, buddy, 65, 75 miles per hour, this is 55 miles on, and you say, officer, <laughs> This is my membership card yeah, yeah. In, the, in the American Vasectomy Club. Yeah. I'm, I'm rushing to bring the population growth under control. <laughs> I mean, now, things like this are just not... This is, this is, this is Anglo-Saxon mm -hmm. collective thinking. Uh, well, now, it's not a bad idea to, to observe population control uh, all right, theories, now, but to, li listen to this one. Listen to this one. Now, that's an ad throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. Candy pants, 100% edible underwear. <laughs> now, you can tell that I don't eat, eat that much. I'm basically rather slim. Candy pants, 100% edible underwear, come in three tastes, butterscotch, cherry, and banana. Uh, have you ever had one? I've never, never laid a, no, I've never uh -huh. had any. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. uh, -huh. uh, -huh. uh, -huh. uh -huh. Now, ne never late and I never now, seen them. No. No. Okay. Now they they are male and female pants. Now imagine yourself <laughs> being suddenly attracted to, to this particular kind of a menu, mm -hmm. candy pants. Mm -hmm. That's American. You can't find this in Europe. Now how do you eat this? At which stage? I'm um, well, all right. Let's say that that you develop the sudden hunger. At which stage do you eat candy pants? Do you eat it alone? Do you eat it off someone? <laughs> now wait, 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 wait. If you eat it off someone, after all, that's what it says here, a candy pants, edible underwear, at which stage do you start to nibble? When you're hungry? Hungry for what? These are the kind, these are, um, you should, and in fact, you should tell me what to do with this. Oh, this no, is no, very no, American. No, uh, 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 imagine, imagine, let's say I, I would file a malpractice suitcase against the manufacturer of candy pants. Mm -hmm. How does he defend his business in court? <laughs> Um, I'm poisoning. I mean, I developed the poisoning. Yeah. I developed um, um, malnutrition <laughs> as a result of it. <laughs> uh, now, if, if I were to t if I were to tell you that if I were to tell you that the candy pants are made in this country, and they are sold in all the novelty, indeed novelty shops, and they are made in a certain town, and the address is Prospect Heights. Now, this sounds like something that I would invent. <laughs> now, could I possibly invent anything like no. this? So you wouldn't the, see this, in other words, in European What, what I'm basically saying is that there's a, freedom, there's a freedom here that you actually don't have 
in Europe. Yeah. Um, there's a sort of a marginal business in the United States, mm -hmm. the business of being free, which eventually becomes central. Playboy and penthouse would be mar couldn't really exist in, in Europe, Western Europe or, or certainly not Eastern Europe. Well, I think everybody has uh, the, the, uh, the different, uh, the, uh, the opposite feeling, perhaps not in uh, Eastern European, uh, but they say that things are looser more in uh, France and uh, Italy and uh, those countries. Nothing, nothing of the kind. I mean, it's just impossible that you could come up with something as bizarre and at the same time normal. I mean, you do buy these things all over the place. I mean, you can you can dance any way you want with the, with the vasectomy club, La <laughs> in, in Western Europe, I would be banned from every dance floor. Uh, this afternoon I was reading an article, uh, a recent article published about you, and there was a little mention that caught my eye. I think it said this about you, that you keep a Buick. You have a Buick? Yeah. You keep a Buick loaded with weapons and food? No, I don't. I have a Buick. Um, uh, old Buick uh, with a hardly anything, just a few belongings that I knew well, when I go around. The article made it sound like you <laughs> had this thing. Well, you had your article this week. You know how accurate these articles are. Well, but... The, uh, Is your article accurate? I mean... Um, uh, I, haven't, go. I haven't read the article, so... <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> no, no, it's... it's <laughs> All right, let me try it. The, the reason I brought this up, the reason that it made sense to me was I know uh, that you consider yourself to be uh, not a, a frightened person, but a, th a threatened person, don't you? Now, I brought something for you. <laughs> all my fiction and all my life has always been based on something that I learned at the age of 17. There was an American theologian, Paul Tillich, who wrote a brilliant book, The Protestant Era, in which he claims that all of us is, at any given time, a threatened creature. That the reason we are threatened, threatened is that we have all the freedom in a Western society to choose from. And yet, at any given moment, we are forced to say yes or no to it. Mm -hmm. Which means the true spirituality is the result of being threatened. Yes or no. Whether it's a sex club or vasectomy, ad, or this encounter. You have to respond by defining yourself in terms of yes or no. And so, Paul Tillich, that's why I came to the United States from Eastern Europe. This was the country where actually I could legally say yes or no mm -hmm. to any kind of an encounter, so to with, any kind of situation. With the freedom of choice, with also the freedom comes, of choice this comes the continual threat. threat. Right. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Uh, will you do us a favor and come back again sometime, and we'll, we'll talk about your new membership in the Candy Pants Club or, or whatever. Uh, Mr. Jerzy Kozinski, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with Stupid Pet Tricks. Stupid pet tricks, and I believe every, everyone, particip everyone participating tonight, do they get the facial blotters? Oh, what a bonanza, huh?